welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Professor Hannah Fry. In the news this week, in Whitehall, with several ministers not expecting to be back after the next election, a rather nice Rembrandt suddenly disappears from the wall. <laughs> <laughs> After more than an hour waiting for the Labour leader, the camouflage unit of the Royal Fusiliers are beginning to wonder where Keir Starmer is. <laughs> <laughs> and late for a meeting in the Capitol building, Joe Biden makes a quick dash across town from the White House. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a comedian who works as an NHS anaesthetist. So, if you are a former patient and you recognise him, he obviously didn't do his job properly. <laughs> Please welcome Ed Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> On Paul's team tonight is a comedian who, in her spare time, loves going diving and says, I'm so lucky to have seen some of the things I've seen underwater. Well, there's someone who hasn't swum in the Thames recently. <laughs> Please welcome <laughs> Zoe Lyons. We begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Ed, have a look at this. Some good-looking PPE. <laughs> yeah. um, Rishi doing his bit for the environment. <laughs> oh, and that's the capital gains tax rally. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this is Labour's plan to close tax avoidance loopholes to raise more money to throw at the NHS. It was Rachel Reeves, I think, that said that she was going to close the loopholes, and one of them is the fact that you get 50% discount in your first year as a nom-dom. I mean, is that not what you get on every broadband deal? <laughs> <laughs> they had a problem, didn't they? Because the Tories stole their idea, mm. which was to stop nom-doms, which is an idea some of us have had for years. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing was, we're going to crack down on tax fraud, and this will raise the money, and then we can start reforming the NHS and paying you better. Well, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Are we <laughs> for that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, About half the audience were convinced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Those people who were against it. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason he's on is so we can see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I do have quite a nasty rash I'd like to have a look at. <laughs> Stay with the NHS. Uh, what has a medical centre in Kent been asking patients to do? Oh, perform their own operations. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be long, will yeah. it? Yeah. Honestly, you're not far off. I'm um, really? <laughs> really? Oh, perform operations on each other. <laughs> <laughs> I think there should be a show, you know, celebrity surgery. Your <laughs> <laughs> yeah. chance to have your spleen removed by Joe Pasquale. <laughs> <laughs> no, a medical centre in Kent sent this message to patients. If you have booked a 24-hour blood pressure or 24-hour ECG <laughs> appointment only, please bring two double-A Duracell batteries for the machine. <laughs> We're going to go back to tax for a minute. Who yes, else, who, else is, who else is in the firing line when it comes to tax? Is it Unpaid Angela Rayner? It is Angela Rayner. Now, I know, Ian, you were a bit dismissive of this last week, so if you could pay attention. No, there is an issue here mm -hmm. in that Labour announcing a tax clampdown and the same week as Angela Rayner won't publish the details of her capital gains tax. So you can see there is a problem and you're only allowed, even if you're married, to have one principal residence. And so people keep saying, why doesn't she just publish her tax advice and clear the matter up? It was interesting, because I wonder how much of it is a sort of genuine mistake, because we all make mistakes, you know. I accidentally certified my own death once, you know. <laughs> I thought you were about to say, I've killed a number of people. <laughs> <laughs> Myself, yeah. And what are the Tories demanding now? That she publishes the legal advice. Close. They're saying Starmer must launch a probe into Rayner. Oh. <laughs> It's a sci-fi film you don't want to yeah. see, isn't it? <laughs> Why do you think, though, the Tories and the Conservative supporting press are so keen to take Angela Rayner down, though? They're utterly terrified of her. And they know that they're going to lose the next general election. I mean, they're dropping like flies, aren't they? Every time you see a Tory MP, they've got a little paper box in their hands, like, well, we'll be coming back, we'll be needing this. The ones I see are sending me pictures. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, they'll have to depend on their OnlyFans pages after this, not they? <laughs> yes, she is one of the few people in the Labour Party uh, with a personality. Or, perhaps, <laughs> <laughs> as David Lammy puts it, she's northern. Um, <laughs> so, the other reason that the Conservatives are uh, going for Angela Rayner is that she does keep demanding 
that lots of people resign. Um, here's a list of the people whose resignation Angela Rayner has demanded over the last five or six years. Have a look at this. <laughs> yeah, but she's not been wrong on any of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the worst list of shag, marry, avoid. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so where's Keir Starmer been recently? <laughs> mm. He's been in Vogue. Did you not catch in Vogue him? Magazine. Oh, okay. In the Vogue magazine. Has yes, he? there was a soft focus profile of Keir and his wife, and it revealed yeah. not very much at all. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Except there was one bit in it which was good, which was what did Keir's wife-to-be say after she first met him? Who are you? <laughs> I mean, very close. Who the fuck does he think he is? <laughs> it does seem, though, as though Keir Starmer is getting a little bit more self-awareness. You all right? She's ready for a nap. <laughs> Give her one of my speeches. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Rishi Zunak also had an interview this week. Yes. How did that go? He gave one to LBC, where he couldn't remember the woman's name. She came from Rhonda and he called her Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look at the clip? Yes, please. Prime Minister, thank you. Let's go to the next call. Louise is in the Rhonda Valley and you're through to the Prime Minister. Go ahead, Louise. Morning to you. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Prime Minister. Hi, Rhonda. Uh, I'll try to get some news in the Rhonda. Oh, Louise, hi. <laughs> sorry, Louise. I'm just down the <laughs> Louise, hi. Uh, what can I call you? Ms Valley. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, that is not the only thing that's gone wrong for the Prime Minister this week. Do you play a bonus game? Yes, yes, yes please. please. Yeah, bonus game, <laughs> bonus game. <laughs> <laughs> Does it come with a little bonus game, bonus game, bonus game, bonus game? It's your own time you're wasting, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fun, it's the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we play a bonus game? No. No, we don't no. want to. <laughs> I wouldn't wish to waste anybody's time. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to play a round of Rishi's randomizer of rubbish. Fingers on buzzer teams, here's the first one. Oh, do you know this? He was seen wearing a pair of trainers. Oh, that... that is one of them, but not this one. Oh, oh. OK. Well, that'd be the picture of the trainer. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> His trousers are too short. They yeah. were, trousers too, were short. too short. People are saying his trousers are uh, two inches too short. <laughs> and uh, Rishi Sunak, he passionately defended his trouser length yes. by telling the son, well, I don't think they're short. <laughs> I mean, he's not a tall man. He's probably just wearing long shorts. <laughs> In that same interview, we found out where does Rishi Sunak like to go for breakfast? Oh, God. Where the spoons? Um, oh, he, that's yeah. what he said. He said, we have one at home in North Allerton. I think I still have the app on my phone, which is interesting, because the Weatherspoons app stayed on his phone, but not the WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> Strange. Yeah. OK, fingers on buzzers. Here's the next one. Something yeah. tells me you're going to get this one. OK, go on, go on. <laughs> His trousers right. are too short. <laughs> <laughs> So he's wearing a pair of these Adidas. Yeah. Are they called sham sambas? Sambas. Sambas. Sambas, yeah. Sambas. And they were voted trainer of the year. And now he's been seen wearing them. Sales will go off a cliff. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, here's what GQ magazine said. Rishi Sunak took an eternally cool sneaker and ruined it for everyone. <laughs> 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 Next one. Yeah. He's on buzzers. What about this one? Oh. oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Is this about the houses in Rwanda that were for the uh, people who are going to be sent there? We're going to live in these houses, and these houses have now been sold off. Indeed. Uh, here is a picture, would you like to see it, of, uh, of yeah. the accommodation and a sad gazumpy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, the state airline, Rwandair, as it's called, uh, told Rishi Sunak that they don't want to be associated with the government's deportation scheme because of the potential damage to their brand. <laughs> They said, just give it to Ryanair, surely. They'd do it, <laughs> wouldn't they? But they'd then drop you off at probably in Burundi or Congo and you have to get a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Rwanda and I've watched a silverback gorilla mate. You dirty devil. <laughs> <laughs> With Suala Brahman. <laughs> The, the president of Rwanda came to London, had a meeting with, uh, with Rishi Sunak, here they are, and uh, while he was here, Rishi Sunak promised him he'd get him on a plane home sometime <laughs> in the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> now, we mustn't forget the Lib Dems, so... Uh, it Who? Has... Who? <laughs> 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 it 
has been a bit of an awkward week for Ed Davey because of Alan Bates's evidence at the post office inquiry. Yes. yes. But what has been tickling him recently? Mrs Ed Davey. <laughs> <laughs> Is it one of their ploys where they knock over something blue? Oh, you're absolutely right. It's one of their hilarious yep. visual metaphors. Oh! oh. Here we go. The time is running out for Rishi Sunak. Yeah. I think you should read Time's slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, and finally, a treat for all of you. Yes, yes. a treat. Oh, good, a treat. It's good to have a treat, would, isn't it? Would you like to see... Yes, yeah, please. ...what have happens a treat. at Nigel Farage's 60th birthday bash? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> no. <laughs> Is that wow. not the Oxford boat crew training for next year's... <laughs> ..boat race? There was a video from Donald Trump saying, ''Happy birthday, Nigel.'' Was it done in a sort of Marilyn Monroe kind? <laughs> 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 so, this is the news that Labour are preparing for power by getting their financial scandals in early, before they become the government. <laughs> According to The Express, Rayner insisted that for many years her main property was a house in Stockport where, she claimed, to live separately from her husband and children for the first five years of her marriage. Let's face it, you all would if you could, wouldn't you? <laughs> the accusations emerged in an authorised biography of Raina, which was titled Red Queen. Annoying, because that means my biography now has to be called Ginger Lady Boffin. Ginger <laughs> 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 Lady Boffin? Yeah, Ginger Lady Boffin. <laughs> Look, I'm sticking by it and yeah. it'll be out soon. Exactly. <laughs> Rishi Sunak revealed this week that he was a big fan of a Weatherspoon's breakfast. Presumably, when the barman asks him, small vegetarian, Rishi replies, yes, I am. Can I have some breakfast? <laughs> the Westminster honey trappers are still trying to ensnare oh, yeah. politicians by sending them pictures of men and women, and in one case, a tractor. And... <laughs> When Jacob Rees-Mogg was asked to comment on sexting, he said, leave my kids out of this, I'll name them as I please. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Paul Zoe, have a look at this. Ah, y yeah. yes, this is the Scrabble news. Scrabble's been around for a very long time as a game. And they're going to introduce a new version of it, which is a simpler version. There's a couple of people arguing over it. Um, there's a simpler version of it coming along, but they don't want people to feel bad about it, but it's called Scrabble for Thickos. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were saying that young people are more compassionate, they're yes. less competitive. Yes. And so they want a version that people aren't trying to win. It's a bit like panel games. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it's been clear that you've not been trying to win for 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's my age. I'm very Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> but there are specialists, aren't there, who know, like, you know, two-letter words, I, Y, or something, yeah. you know, some very obscure sort of word. But that's sort of the dull version of Scrabble, yeah. you know, people who look up to... Oh, you mean words. Strip Scrabble? <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a game. I think I've got another vowel coming on. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. So you are absolutely right, of course. This is the news that Scrabble's been made easier. The first major redesign in 75 years. Yeah. And Mattel say that they have made the game more inclusive for those who find word games intimidating. That's me. Yeah. Three gold cards you get. So you also get some helper cards and you've got to complete 20 challenges. The challenges, though, by the way, they include play a three-letter word, play a word that touches the edge of the board, <laughs> and, as ever, stop Grandad putting down a word that's a bit racist. <laughs> 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 what has Brett Smitherum got to say? Do you know who he is? No. no. He's the UK's number one Scrabble player. He says that the simpler version is for people who want to avoid a sense of losing, instead favouring working towards a fun goal together. Yeah. Thing is, in this show, there is no place for losers or for any fun. So, fingers on buzzers, we're going to have some quick Scrabble-related <laughs> questions. What do you mean there's no place for losers? He's been... It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> OK, question one. What is the highest scoring word you can fit on a Scrabble board? I know this one. It's anaesthetist. Ooh, it is a medical thing. Is it waiting list? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the longest. <laughs> By far the longest. It's oxyphenbutazone. Do you know what that is? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a, you know, we haven't got time to go into it's, it. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favourite drug to give patients? I do, yeah, look, I get to do cool things. I give, um, I give ketamine to kids. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, pretty much every day I give ketamine or fentanyl to kids and then I go to work. So... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, question two. Yex is a word that is allowed in Scrabble. Yex. yex. What does it mean? Yex. Yex. Is it when you're really eager to have sex and you just go, yex? <laughs> <laughs> does that uh, crop up much in your line of work? <laughs> <laughs> it means to hiccup, everybody. Um, what happens if Stan is put down, anyone? Stan? Stan. Um, well, I don't know. Is it allowed? No, yes. It must yeah, be. one of the Stans. Kazakhstan. <laughs> but I, I'd, I'd accept that in a game, particularly if I'd put it down. <laughs> it's a Gen Z word, it's a, to be a highly devoted fan of someone. A stan? Oh, yeah, stan. Like stan, yeah. Like Stan Laurel? Uh, I, think like, <laughs> I think like the Eminem song. Oh, yes, of course, of course I course, meant that. Who, who, do you, <laughs> who do you stan? <laughs> Sorry? Who do you stan? Uh, Hindu stan. <laughs> <laughs> What is the longest word playable using only vowels? Ooh. It is you away. It's a Gregorian cadence, apparently. Do you know that word, Ian? Yes, but you can't use it since 2016 because it's got <laughs> EU at the front. <laughs> <laughs> Staying with competitive activities, yes. what did British athlete Russ Cook achieve this week? Is this the man who ran across Africa? It absolutely oh, is, yeah. yes. An epic run across yeah. the entire length of Africa. Uh, the equivalent of 385 marathons. And as he got to the finish line, Sky News reporter Rob Harris was determined to be there. After 352 days, Russ Cook is completing his extraordinary endeavour, running the length of Africa. Here we go, we're with him on the final part as he reaches the most northerly point of the continent. He started a year ago from South Africa. He wants to turn his life around. He'd had his challenges and he's taken on an extraordinary challenge, an epic mission, faced so many hurdles going through Africa, traversing the continent through conflict, climate and illness. He's had injuries and fatigue. <laughs> Did he run the whole length of Africa with him? <laughs> Some people have been saying that Russ Cook's world record claim has been thrown into doubt. <laughs> Anyone know why? There's some other runners mm -hmm. that have a small group and they said, we've done it first, basically. Absolutely right. They claim that a Danish athlete ran across Africa more quickly, although they do admit that they took a different route, which was uh, shorter by 2,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Um, there have also been some mutterings that Russ took two days off during... Uh, oh, during yeah, how dare he? How dare he? he took 15 days off in Angola because he had his passport and visa stolen, so... Also, in uh, Congo, he was uh, kidnapped by a group of men wielding machetes, um, which does give us another chance for this absolutely <laughs> excellent gear change. It looks very much like there'll be fewer showers and it will be a bit drier. Oh, Carol, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to say it's my homework, Sal, but sadly... <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is, totally. Uh, it's 17 minutes past six. Now, machetes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that Scrabble has been made easier for a younger generation who find the game too intimidating and don't like competition. Here's a fun fact about Scrabble. It's the only realm of human experience where quasi quatang has any value. <laughs> <laughs> In other word news, the Daily Star reported that many people are irritated by motivational phrases, with the most annoying thing to hear being, you got this. <laughs> Particularly if the doctor is pointing to a poster in the STD clinic at the time. <laughs> okay. According to The Telegraph, Russ Cook, the 27-year-old ultra runner who ran the length of Africa, survived machete-wielding villages, armed robbers and bouts of food poisoning. And that was just on his way to Stansted. <laughs> And so, to round two, yes. and in tribute to the late physics genius Peter Higgs, it's time for the Large Hadron Collider of news. Mm. Uh, yeah. on buzzer teams. Yeah. Hang on, that's just the graphic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was the eclipse. <laughs> so this is before my time, but I believe there's a TV show 
mm -hmm. uh, called That's Life. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, that there was a saying uh, that this dog had, mm -hmm. which was sausages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They revealed this week that it wasn't actually the dog saying sausages. Everyone believed the dog was, but it turned out actually the dog was growling. And what was making the noise was the owner squeezing the throat during growl. For those of you who don't remember, would yeah. you like to remind yourself of this classic moment? <laughs> Tell us what you have on a Thursday, Prince. Well, yeah. What's your Skippy Prince? Yeah. And what? Yeah. <laughs> he could also say other words. Um, do you know what other words Prince could say? Black pudding. <laughs> Stop squeezing my throat. <laughs> Can you contact the Oz PCO? He could say Jar, he could say Anthony, and George, <laughs> who was the neighbour who fed him the sausages. <laughs> now, actually, Prince is kind of a, a multi talented dog. Would you, would you like to see him telling a joke? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. oh yes. Yeah. When is a door not a door? When it's. <laughs> he now works on cruise ships. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness we have moved on to cat videos. <laughs> This is the news that the famous talking dog on That's Life wasn't actually saying sausages. This dog made the involuntary sound when its throat was being gradually squeezed, which also explains why Saddam Hussein's last defiant message was, death to the West, sausages. Quite <laughs> 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 black. Yeah. The dog was being made to make sounds by its owner squeezing its throat, but the TV crew were reassured that the dog was happy because his tail was wagging. Although, it turned out that was only because Esther Ransom was tickling his testicles. <laughs> <laughs> That's life. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, teams. You've done it again. <laughs> 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 This is the eclipse, uh, which was passing through North America, and it happens infrequently, but people are always amazed and amused by it. Do you want to have a little look at what they saw? I'd rather yeah. not, yeah. no. <laughs> okay. isn't, that, isn't that the logo for Disprin? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we... Scientists, they also use this as an opportunity to study what effect the eclipse had on the behaviour of animals. It was Although... amazing. They thought it was night. Not all of them, though. No. According to The Guardian, there were zebras at Dallas Zoo who were largely unimpressed by the event. <laughs> <laughs> they do see things in very black and white. <laughs> and Trump didn't wear the glasses. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're right. Last time there was an eclipse in the US, Trump was mocked for looking directly at the sun. Do you know what he did this time, though? He did it again. <laughs> uh, no. He released a video on Truth Social to celebrate the occasion. Oh, my God! The idea that you put out a video saying darkness will descend on us. <laughs> <laughs> when the eclipse happened, the most Googled thing was, why do my eyes hurt? <laughs> Which, I don't know, I'd like to think that we're more advanced than moths, but, you know, <laughs> no. I feel like the next Google question was, how do I get out of this lampshade? <laughs> <laughs> ah. You know what, though? What? You were right, Paul, about the eclipse looking like the disparate ad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Panadol, isn't it, it looks like? That's the one, Panadol. Big up Panadol. Panadol. Panadol, Panadol, Panadol. It is Panadol, yeah. Sorry, it's not Dispin, it's Panadol. Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> all... <laughs> all right, Paul. Oh, here we go, good. Here we go. That's nothing. What do you oh. <laughs> You've made me look a right thicko. <laughs> Did anyone see how the eclipse was inadvertently covered on Mexican rolling news this week? And there was a particular eclipse which wasn't the eclipse everyone thought it was going to Quite be. Quite right. Do we have a look at it? Are we allowed to have a look at it? I, I mean, I'm going to play the text. Nasas también en el municipio de Durango, Torreón, 
Monclova, Musquis, donde está tu familia, y las negras. Time now for the odd one out round in Ed. Your four are 900 sub postmasters, Ronnie Winslow, Daniel Fairbrother, and journalists aboard Air Force One. Well, the post office story is about miscarriage. Mm -hmm. Um, 900 people denied justice and persecuted for decades and not given any compensation, and now they're finally saying, oh, those people, yes, yes, we knew they were innocent. We just, we just prosecuted them anyway. And the odd one out is that's an absolute national disgrace, and I don't care much about that. <laughs> anyway, that... Are you going to pick an odd one out, or...? Yes. <laughs> um, the... Winslow boy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that was a miscarriage of justice. Mm -hmm. Stealing a postal order. Exactly. But, but he, which he didn't do. He didn't, mm -hmm. but he was smoking, so he should have been shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any guesses for what the other one out is? Yes, the aeroplane, the journalists, because they did it. <laughs> <laughs> they nicked stuff off the plane. You're absolutely right. They have all been wrongly accused of stealing, apart from journalists on board Air Force One who have been asked to return stolen items. So before the post office inquiry resumed this week, what was the new evidence, Ian? ITV had a tape, mm -hmm. people saying we had told Paula Venels mm -hmm. that Horizon could remotely access and fiddle their accounts. There was that, and then there was further evidence in the inquiry this week, and it, it, it is sort of getting there. It literally is everything that anyone has ever said for two decades is absolutely true. Mm. I was pleased to see that the BBC did give Private Eye a, a mention, because Private Eye did play a large part in writing about this story for 20-odd years. <laughs> That's not enough reason to buy it, but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, one of the general managers apologised this week from the post office. He said, um, when they put the first pregnant postmistress um, into jail, she mm. lost her case, he sent a, a message round saying, brilliant result. Mm -hmm. He's now said, with hindsight, that doesn't look entirely appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Well, Channel 4 did catch up with Paula Venels um, earlier this week. She came out of a church, possibly praying for some kind of miracle. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's have a little look. Well, can I ask you to make the statement that you made, just so, um, in, ter in terms of the public inquiry? Have you got anything to say about that? <laughs> Paula, you're accused of lying to MPs. Did you lie to MPs? You're accused of being at the centre of a major cover-up in this whole issue. Would you accept that there's been a cover-up? There's, there's a lot of evidence that there's been a cover-up. Have you anything to say? And that, as they say, was that. Yeah, the truth will set you free. Mm. <laughs> OK, so, Air Force One, do we know what exactly the 13 journalists are accused of stealing? Yeah, cutlery, mm -hmm. teacups, mm -hmm. uh, towels, mm -hmm. anything that's got the sort of presidential insignia on it. Absolutely A right. wing. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have sick bags on Air Force One? Uh, when Donald Trump's been charged. I bet they will, yeah. <laughs> yeah. According to the Daily Telegraph, one of the items suspected of being taken off Air Force One was a tumbler. Although that later turned out to be the White House code name for Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Fairbrother, he's the chap with the fridge. And he was stopped by police in Stevenage for carrying a fridge on his back. Anyone know why he was carrying a fridge on they, his back? Did they think he'd nicked it? They did. They thought he nicked wow. it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> he was actually out running, training to uh, break the record for the fastest marathon carrying a household appliance. <laughs> I hope he gave the police the cold Thank shoulder. <laughs> yes. Thank you. There we are. <laughs> they, they, they let him go again. They did, and uh, he commended the police on their vigilance. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone know why thefts in Scotland would be going up? Oh, it's something to do with the people who were running it, isn't it? Um... <laughs> <laughs> It is because police, they're too busy dealing with crimes uh, reported under the Scottish hate speech oh, bill. Oh, yeah, yeah. 8,000 of them. Mm -hmm. The First Minister of Scotland introduces a new bill about hate crimes and says everybody can complain, and most people complain about him. 
<laughs> and also, they announced this law on April Fool's Day, which probably isn't the best. I mean, I try to avoid all those kind of days, especially in hospital, like April Fool's. <laughs> or, no. Oh, the only one is Halloween. Love working in hospital on Halloween, because lots of people dress up as doctors for Halloween, so we feel really well staffed then. <laughs> <laughs> Public inquiry into the post office scandal resumed this week. One of the law firms that advised the post office was called Womble Bond Dickinson. <laughs> they have a lawyer called Andrew Parsons, but he only got the job there through nepotism, thanks to his uncle Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Zoe, yeah. your four are Dominic West, Shane Rose, a bearded. Uh, be let me look, 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 look. A bearded British soldier and someone <laughs> eating a dry biscuit in Dorset. Right. Uh, a bearded British soldier is the only one you can't pronounce properly. Absolutely. There you go. So You're Dominic, right, have the points. Yeah. <laughs> Dominic West was in an advert for, was it Nationwide? Nationwide Bank. Yeah. Bank. They made a claim in the advert that uh, we're not closing any branches, that actually they had closed branches, so that, that advert was withdrawn. I think British Army gentlemen <laughs> yeah. are now allowed to have beard. Mind you, he's, he's only got a stick on beard because he's got to keep it on he's with got, his finger. Yeah. Look, see there. <laughs> Sean Rose, did you say? Mm -hmm. Don't know anything about him. I think he's got something to do with horses, or there's a horse following him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the best answers this programme has ever yeah. had. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the dry biscuit is too tough to eat to the, for that gentleman there. Honestly, Dominic West is the key to this. You're, you're right about things being banned. So the dry biscuits have clearly been banned, mm. um, and the beard is the only thing that's not been banned because it's now been introduced into the army, so therefore the beard is the odd one out. Absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. There we are. Yes. OK, why has the army overturned their ban on facial hair? Um, maybe it's because they need more recruits and there are some people who want to keep their beard, so you, rather than sort of just say, no, you can't, you can, and you come. Yeah, there's a, they did a survey and an overwhelming majority of troops voted to change the rule. Mm. Um, and this brings the army in line with the RAF, which changed its rules in 2019, and the Royal Navy, whose sailors have always been allowed to wear beards. Mm. My action man had a beard. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think you'll find that was a toy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what the specific new rules are? Uh, it must be your own beard. <laughs> <laughs> it must be growing out of your face. It's I got to be neat and tidy. Absolutely. Can't be longer than two inches. Uh, no longer than an inch. An inch oh. long? Yeah. yeah, an inch long. Blimey. And have no patchy growth or exaggerated colours. <laughs> I think they should introduce that nationwide. <laughs> <laughs> Right into the building society of Dominic yeah. West. <laughs> In related news, what unusual event occurred outside Buckingham Palace this week? Oh, the change of yeah. the guard, Troop Under the Colour. They mm -hmm. had some French troops doing it, didn't they? They the first absolutely time. did. Troops took part in the change of the guard to mark the 120th anniversary of the Entente Cordiale. Yeah. I personally prefer Ribena. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you know how the sun covered the story, though? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, they, what did it say? They, here, they predicted how the ceremony might look. Have a little look. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> OK, why has the Crown actor, Dominic West, recently been banned? For the advert, because mm. he, he played a part of a bank manager and he would say, we don't close any branches, our competitors do, and it turned out they closed a lot of branches as much as their competitors do. Absolutely. 20 branches have closed down in the last 18 months. Mm. Um, and one printed advert that they did contained the text, going, going nowhere, which looks convincing, but then you zoom in on the small print and it says, until at least 2026. <laughs> Nationwide, they argued that their advert was true because the claims were in the present tense. <laughs> what, in, in the second in which they were writing the ad? Yes. <laughs> exactly. OK, why was Australian equestrian Shane Rose banned from a show jumping event recently? Yes, he completed the uh, course about a horse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he completed it without something. Uh, without oh. any trousers. Oh, yes, you're absolutely right. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> he wore a mankini at a fancy dress riding event near Oh, <laughs> no, he'll regret that. <laughs> to get some Vaseline out. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> In other question news, yes. what has the British Show Pony Society recently announced? So what they're going to do is, if you can jump over a fence, you, you can complete it without a pony. <laughs> You're... No, I can't be. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. Um... OK. <laughs> they are... <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> they're introducing a hobby horse in competition. Oh, right. For a £300 prize. Do you want yeah. to see some hobby horsing Yes, in please, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> when they refuse. So graceful. Yeah, I mean, they're having fun. And that, that is the main thing, I think. <laughs> OK. Oh, nice. um, and lastly, yep. uh, why might someone in Dorset not be allowed to eat a certain type of dry biscuit? I, I don't know. Why? Why? why OK, the it that? is because yeah. at the Dorset knob-throwing games, the popular oh, yes. knob-eating yes. race has been banned. <laughs> Uh, I just want to be absolutely clear here what we're talking about um, when we're referring to knobs. Uh, let's see a couple of knobs at the festival. There you go. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Events still going ahead at the Dorset Knob Festival include guess the weight of the big knob. <laughs> well, according to his Wikipedia page, Prince Andrew weighs 109 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone want to guess why the festival has banned the race? of eating them as quickly as possible. It must be health and safety, isn't it? It is health Ch and safety. Choking hazard. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, or, as one organiser put it, we don't want people choking on a knob. No. <laughs> it's a rule I stick by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Bushcraft, the magazine <laughs> dedicated to bushcraft and outdoor skills. And we are going to start with bracelet that what is the new must-have fashion item? That links you to a policeman. <laughs> 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 no, it's bracelet that looks like a roll of sellotape is the new must-have fashion item. Would you like to see this? Yes, please. Yeah. Bracelet made by fashion brand Balenciaga. There you go. <laughs> Do we know how much that is? £3,000. No. What? Mm. That's a rip-off. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Ray Mears recently what in the woods near Leicester? Ray Mears recently spotted mating with an antelope <laughs> in the woods near Leicester. <laughs> but that is, well, it's a case of mistaken identity. It was a horse. <laughs> uh, Ray Mears recently demonstrated his extensive bushcraft knowledge in the woods near Leicester. Uh, this is a highlight of the bushcraft calendar, the Ray Mears Experience Weekend in Leicestershire. At his demonstration, Ray Mears showed how to obtain clean drinking water through a simple process of nationalising the water companies and taking them back into the <laughs> <laughs> Next up, world's oldest man says the key to a long life is what? Uh, living a long time. <laughs> <laughs> It's the usual thing, isn't it? It's drinking moderation, eating moderation, plenty of exercise, being born a long time ago, getting up in the morning. It's all that sort of stuff, isn't it? Yeah. 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 All of this helps, but yeah. he, put, he puts it down to fish and chips, everybody. Well, <laughs> those man says the key to long life is fish and chips. Oh. Um, yes, this is the newest title holder of the world's oldest man. John Tinnis Wood is ill. Oh, sorry, no, he's 111. <laughs> <laughs> We did that joke in pantomime last year. Yeah, I, re I was there. Yes, you were there, yes, that's right. Uh, next up, there are people reading Bushcraft magazine who at some point will need to what? Return to their families. <laughs> Speak to an actual woman. <laughs> uh, no, there are people reading Bushcraft magazine who at some point will need to show someone else the sharp part of an axe. <laughs> um, the article includes lots of useful advice for anyone wielding an axe, such as always cut away from yourself. <laughs> that tip provided by Jim Lefty Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Britain's loudest bird, what? Britain's loudest bird, Gemma Collins, says she likes the quiet life. <laughs> <laughs> Annoys residents of housing estates. <laughs> Britain's loudest bird had a very successful breeding year. Uh, this is oh. the male bittern, which is flourishing in England and Wales. Let's have a little listen to their distinctive booming call. <laughs> <laughs> Are they just blowing over the top of a milk yeah. bottle? <laughs> <laughs> Before stealing the contents. <laughs> According to The Guardian, the birds are hard to spot despite their large size because they are secretive and successful at camouflaging themselves among reeds. If you don't know what they look like, take a look at this. Oh, yeah. Charming. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Next, getting your hands on one of Tristan Gooley's what <laughs> is the best way to what? 
Right. <laughs> now, who's going to be brave enough to ignore it? <laughs> ignore the ghoulie in the room. Oh, that's a <laughs> I was just going to say, get arrested. <laughs> uh, getting your hands on one of Tristan Ghoulie's books is the best way to learn celestial navigation. Oh. The author concludes by saying that they hope that this four-page article on winter bushcraft will encourage the reader to take the time to pause, notice, question and wonder why the hell do I subscribe to this magazine? <laughs> Next up, Claudia Schiffer in row with West Suffolk Council over what? Body parts in the wrong recycling bin. <laughs> recycling? No, it's, uh, it's uh, Claudia Schiffer in round with West Suffolk Council over her ugly plug sockets. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. So, this is mo model Claudia Schiffer, who's been banned by the council from replacing unsightly plug sockets in her Tudor mansion in Suffolk for fear that the works could damage the centuries-old oak panelling. According to the Daily Mail, the house is built in the shape of an H in honour of Henry VIII was a nice idea at the time, although these days they do get bothered by an awful lot of helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of steps fans. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand what you've just said? <laughs> Is that who you stand, Ian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I stand H. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and finally, man having vasectomy <laughs> during earthquake says what? I only come in for a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise known as a short back and whoop. <laughs> <laughs> no, man having vasectomy during earthquake says, I really wasn't worried. This is Justin Allen from New York who was undergoing the procedure when a 4.8 magnitude earthquake hit the city last week. According to the Daily Mail, the doctor was forced to put his tool down. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the final scores are Ian and Ed have five, Paul and Zoe have nine. Nine. You were very good. I apologise. No, <laughs> but just before we go, there is just time for the caption competition. Ian and Ed, you've got this. So what setting did you put the CT scanner on? <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Zoe, you get this. <laughs> oh, yes, the woman is saying, OK, Dim, but only because it's your birthday. <laughs> 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 On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Ed Patrick, Paul Merton and Zoe Lyons, and I leave you with the news that... On a state visit to the UK, Emmanuel Macron gets the honour of being shown one of Britain's cleanest rivers. <laughs> In Somerset, there's evidence of another Tory MP caught in a honey trap as Jacob Rees-Mogg's aides are spotted helping him send an intimate sketch of himself. <laughs> <laughs> and in Birmingham, one woman having dropped a piece of pork pie on the kitchen floor is determined to get it back. <laughs> Good night, thank you. <laughs>